It's a beautiful spring morning in the mountains of Appalachia where I live. You can hear some birds singing. I hear some behind me, some over there. I can hear some on the other side of Granny's down the hill through the holler. I guess they're talking to each other. The world is turning green again. Green up is what we call that here in the mountains. So green up has definitely happened. Along with all that beautiful green and the, the twittering birds, you can see blooms everywhere you look from the dogwood trees that are still in bloom, the fruit trees are blooming, beautiful wildflowers everywhere you look, and the wonderful orange azaleas are in bloom. When I was growing up, I heard people call those orange azaleas different things. Some people just called them orange azaleas. Granny called them flame azaleas. I also heard people call them honeysuckles, wild honeysuckle, but we call something else honeysuckle. What we call honeysuckle, I think, is technically honeysuckle. But that often happens with plants. People have different names for them in different areas. I have several of those flame azaleas around my mountain holler. I have one just outside my kitchen window up on the bank that I can see when I'm washing dishes. And as funny as it sounds, kind of sounds strange, but it's true, those orange azaleas call to me this time of the year. So what do they say? What kind of things do they tell me? Well, that one outside my window, when I see it in bloom, I think about the time that me and Matt was up there hunting for a Christmas tree and we stumbled on an old barbed wire fence. In my lifetime, there's never been a fence there. Why would there be a fence? That must have been a pasture for someone. And it had to be someone in my family, someone in days gone by. It makes me wish Pap was here so I could call him and ask him whose it was. Anyway, but that's what that one calls to me. He says, come on back out here. I bet you can find more of the barbed wire fence. Maybe you'll find some other treasures. But of course, I can't leave my dishes. I've got to finish washing up. Some of my other favorite azaleas that call to me, those flame azaleas, are on the roads that I travel. For many years, I worked at the Tri-County Community College, and the road between the college there in Peachtree and Clay's Corner in Brasstown has lots of orange azaleas that you can see blooming this time of the year. So for all those years that I traveled that road twice a day, I would notice every spring when those were in bloom. And they would call out to me. What would they tell me? Well, there's one just beyond the bridge um, on the other side of Clay's going towards the college. And it, that first one, it would tell me, remind me of the stories that Pap had told me about when he was a boy. When he was a boy right there, that area was called Paradise. Today, if you've ever traveled down through that area, there's a, a road there named Paradise. I'm sure it was named because that was the little area of the community there that was called when Pap was a boy. But that's where the Brasstown Creek flows into the Hiawassee River. They converge right there. And when Pap was a boy, he said that was where people in that general area liked to cross because it was a good, shallow, flat place. So it was easy to cross if you were a person walking, if you, were, if you had a team of mules or oxen or horses. It was an easy place to, to cross the river, and they called it the Island Ford. So Pap said when he was a boy, if he walked through there, he'd roll his britchy legs up of his overalls, and then he would cross over and then roll them back down. Of course, he was probably barefooted. He didn't have to worry about wearing it, about getting his shoes wet but he said that was just a, a place that everyone used to cross that was their mode of transportation in those days walking by shanks mare as we would say walking by their feet not in the car like when i was traveling back and forth to work going by there you know and on the blacktop and speeding along in my car i would think of those people that crossed crossed the river there not just Pap, but I would think about the people that lived in Brasstown, the people that lived in other areas. At that time, Pap's family was living on the Hawshaw farm that his, pap, his daddy, his Pap, my Papa, Wade, was a sharecropper, and that's where they lived. So when they would need to come to Brasstown or Peachtree or whatever, they would come down along the, the river, and then they would cross over the island ford. So I would think about all those kind of people when I would notice those orange azaleas. They'd make me slow down and, and think about that. Another Another wonderful story Pap told me about that island ford was not when the, bloom, the uh, wonderful blooms were in bloom, the orange and all the dogwoods and the green and all that, but was in the dead of winter. He said it was one of the coldest winters he could ever remember. And in, often would happen in families in those days, I'm sure in your families was the same. It was such a large family that sometimes the older grandkids was the same age or close to in the same age as the younger kids of a family. So Pap's mother, Marie, was one of the oldest children. 
So he was more the age of some of her younger brothers and sisters. So one of those brothers was named Frank, Uncle Frank. I can remember Frank well, and I loved him. And he was probably a teenager, maybe late teens, and Pap was just a boy. So one day they come and they were gonna have to cross the island ford with mules and a wagon, and it was froze solid, Pap said. The whole river was just froze over. So Frank was the one in charge. He had to decide, should we cross it or what should we do? Well, he finally decided he, that once they started to cross, the weight of the wagon and the hooves of the mules would just break through and they'd go straight through to, you know, to the ground and it'd be all right. So they started to cross. Pap said it was a sight he would never forget. That's not what happened. The ice held, but the mules began to slide, and once they did, they got scared. But once they got scared, they really started sliding, and they were pulling the wagon and going crazy, and, and just all kinds of mayhem was going on with those mules in the wagon. And Pap said it was a sight he would never forget. He would always remember. So when I would drive by and see that azalea blooming, I felt like it was calling to me, saying, you should come down here and see if you can find the island ford and remember the stories that Pap told you. As I would go on towards college, on towards the college, going up Dusenberry Hill, if you're a local, you'll know where that's at. There was one at the top of the hill almost, and I would always think it was telling me, it's not too late, turn around, turn around and go home where your, where your real life is. I'm one of those people I work because I had to work, not because I, it wasn't my passion. My passion was at home with my family, uh, with the blind pig and the acorn, those things. So I would feel like that one was telling me, it's not too late, you can turn around. But of course I couldn't do that. I couldn't shirk my responsibility to the college and my responsibility to the family to earn a living. So I had to continue to go. So on the way home though, I would still notice those orange azaleas blooming their beauty, but it was a different feeling then. They would call to me, that first one would say, you're getting to go home. You can go home, it's all over. You're getting to go home where you really want to be. And then as I went on down the hill and I would see that last one, it was like it would say, why don't you go to Pap and Granny's? You should stop by on your way home and see what they're doing and see if Pap will tell you some more stories of when he used to cross the island ford as a boy. So all that may sound like a whole bunch of silly nonsense to you, but that's the way I think about things. I try to live very close to the land uh, as I can and try to pay attention to the nature around me. And I especially love the beauty. I love all the seasons though. I'm so excited about those orange azaleas, excited enough to do a YouTube video about them, but I'm equally excited about the wildness of summer when it gets here, about the beautiful uh, fall our mountains take on, the fall look that our mountains take on when those trees put on their fall garments all those colorful garments I love that and I love the barrenness of winter too I love all the seasons equally another wonderful thing about those orange azaleas is the time of the year that they bloom here in spring we always have some cool weather even though we have a taste of the warmth and then we'll have some cool days and I know you've probably noticed just like I have anytime the weather changes and goes from a kind of warm back to the cool back to being airish as we would say whether it's in the fall or the spring the sky takes on the prettiest blue color just, a, just so intense that it almost feels like you could reach out and touch it with your hands. Well, when that happens in spring of the year and you have those beautiful orange blooms and then you have that backdrop of that wonderful blue sky, that is one of the prettiest things I have ever seen. I hope you have some flame azaleas blooming where you live that you can notice this time of the year. If you don't, I would encourage you to, to look at online and see if you can find some pictures or some videos because they are one of the prettiest things in the mountains of Appalachia that you will ever see.